Hello, everyone, and welcome to Life Questions. I'm Bill Harris, your host. We're back with brand new episodes after a six-month hiatus due to COVID-19. We're happy that you're back with us. As you recall, this program takes a look at life's questions from a biblical perspective. And um, as you can imagine, with the worldwide pandemic, uh, it has evoked a lawful, an awful lot of questions uh, in here. And so we are here with a panel of experts to address these matters. And these experts are actually local pastors that we have found and just, well, we didn't exactly drag them off the street to come in and <laughs> answer these questions. But they agreed to come on in these troublesome times. And, you know, people are asking questions like, are these the last days? And, and what should I be doing uh, in this day and time? Should I be obeying the government mandates about masking and all these things? Uh, let's introduce our pastors to you at this time. First of all, we have Pastor Chris Ewing of the County Line Church of, uh, of the Brethren, followed by Rick Shear of the Living Hope Assembly of God at St. Mary's. Then there's Pastor Lynn Passett of Community Bible Church in Arlington. And rounding up our panel is Pastor Kelly Waltz of the Church of uh, Allentown. Okay. Everybody's just grinning and smiling. He's <laughs> <laughs> waiting, waiting for that yeah. first question. I know, I know. Well, I, I think to, to ease into it, make you feel better. <laughs> why, don't, why don't we begin by just going around and having, having you tell me, what's it like at your particular congregation? What, 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 what has COVID-19 done to change the atmosphere in your local congregation and the way you're doing things these days? Pastor Kelly, we'll start with you. Well, the way we're doing things now is a lot different than when it first hit. Um, when it first hit and everybody was in a panic, so many questions about what is it, what's going to happen. And so we did make the decision to go ahead and close and mm -hmm. do services online, but we always made it known the fact that our doors were always open. The door is always unlocked. So we did have those people that do believe in the First Amendment, and we always had every taping or live streaming, we always had people that were there in church. They would sit, spread out. And so we made available on our Facebook page and on YouTube our services, both services, the 9 o'clock traditional with the hymns, as well as the contemporary with the uh, worship band. Mm -hmm. And um, so after several weeks and it started to play out as to what was all involved, we decided to go ahead at the end of May, open back up, still live streaming both services, mm -hmm. and we continue to live stream both services. We made a few changes in how we do communion, uh, no passing of the offering plates. We mm -hmm. spread out chairs for a while, took some chairs out, and our traditional, they tend to sit a little bit more spread out, our contemporary service, it was like COVID didn't even hit. Um, we have <laughs> not mandated crowd. masks. We do have a few, very few, a couple that did wear masks. But for the most part, people don't wear masks. Uh, we had a gentleman that has heart conditions that's been in and out of the hospital during this time. Yeah. He has been in church whenever he's been able, and he doesn't wear a mask. He's just putting his faith and trust in God. And, wow. mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, we made a few accommodations, a lot of hand sanitizer sitting around. Oh, yeah. And, um, but it's business as normal. Okay. God's business. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. Go right ahead. Well, I was in kind of a unique situation. I had just been hired on as the new pastor of my church, mm -hmm. gave my first official sermon, and boom, the next week, <laughs> oh, wow. we closed. So wow. uh, it definitely threw things into a loop. My church did not have a Facebook page. My church had a web page, but it was very old and archaic, and no one had even updated it in quite some time. So those were the first two things that I had to get scurrying on. Mm -hmm. I'm also a bivocational pastor, so I have a full-time job uh, working at a local assisted living in Findlay. So my time was very limited as to how much time I could put into getting mm -hmm. things set up, but we immediately got on to Facebook Live, uh, stayed closed until the 1st of June, went back, and we've been open ever since. Uh, a few of our parishioners do wear masks occasionally, but for the most part, everyone uh, feels the same, that we're not going to let this control our lives. Yeah. Pastor? 
Um, <clears throat> well, we never shut down. So um, there at County Line, we looked at the aspect of um, everything going on and we knew that there was other needs outside of just COVID-19 that we needed to address. And so uh, we have a food and a clothing pantry that are open weekly and the question was raised, if we keep those open to help the people, shouldn't we keep the church open to help for the spiritual needs? So we advertised it. We did not advertise that, hey, we're open and come, but we did advertise that our doors were open and available for anybody that needed. So two-thirds of our church um, stayed away. We encouraged anybody and everybody to connect with us on Facebook, and we started Facebook Lives um, from the get-go. Um, we did stop uh, bulletins, passing the plates, but outside of that, we didn't really change a, a whole lot. Um, we constantly have hand sanitizer out mm -hmm. way prior to this, sure. you know, and, and available, you know, well-stocked bathrooms with soap and running water, um, you know, just the, the normal things that uh -huh. um, um, people, so we have a few people wearing masks and our policy is personal responsibility. So that we encourage everybody to take um, the responsible actions that they deem fit and um, we do encourage those that are at high risk still to connect with us on Facebook because we don't want them to feel guilty uh, not being there or, um, you know, um, also to put themselves at risk. So um, we have brought back our bulletins. We're still not passing the plates. But um, outside of that, you know, that's all we've done. Now, the great thing about never closing is, is we never had to have an opening plan. So <laughs> that, that was, uh, we took some heat at first for not closing, but then when it came around, we... We were praised because we weren't closed, and, <laughs> and while everybody else was struggling to figure out how do we open you know, wisely, we're sitting here being like, well, we're already open, so we don't have to worry about it. All right. So there's a blessing. All right, Pastor, what about your congregation? Um, yeah, we, we had to close down early. Some of the things we scrambled with is we didn't do Facebook Live uh, when it started either. We recorded our service and did YouTube and, and did things like that, but we uh, then immediately got into the Facebook Live. We started the Instagram Live. But what we immediately discovered is not everybody's online. And so we began audio recordings mm -hmm. of each service as well and started distributing those to those that don't uh, have online mm -hmm. access or, or for whatever reason. And we distributed those during the time we were closed as well. We were like you. We, we had hand sanitizer and things like that before COVID. And, uh, but then we've changed. Uh, we've social distanced our chairs or uh, physical distance, our chairs, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it. Now we are we are telling the people that uh, uh, masks are required, but we're not asking any questions. You know, somebody comes in without a sit down, whatever. That's up to them. We're not we're not forcing any questions, but we are saying let's do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and so, but we're about we're about a third down um, from what we were pre-COVID, and uh, but our online. What, what we've discovered is our online has just taken off. I mean, we averaged, now we averaged 50 on a good Sunday, mm -hmm. but, and, and, and I know numbers are skewed and things like that, but we were averaging over 700 on Facebook Live every week we were is closed. That right? And even now, we're still over 100 every week now that we're back open mm -hmm. as far as, uh, people receiving that. So we, we, we see that things are going to be done different in the yeah. future. That's what I was going to ask you. Do, you. do you think there are going to be some changes made that will become permanent as a result of COVID? I think a yeah. lot of churches are going to continue to live stream because they found that this is something that shut-ins yeah, uh, and others, yeah, there is an audience out there, a captive audience. Sure, so sure. I think a lot of churches have made that choice that they're going to go that direction. Well, and you may have even some people that because we live stream or they can watch it later on Facebook or YouTube, may make that decision not even to come back. Right. Um, that you know, is a possibility. Stay, um, you know, you just stay home and watch it. Yeah, just stay saying. home mm -hmm. and watch it. Yeah. So they're, they're, they're with you, it's just that they're not in person. Which then, you know, so it gives a lot of opportunities, but then it also grants a lot of problems because if people do stay home, how do you connect with them? in a personal way yeah, to mm -hmm. actually minister to their physical and, right. and other right. needs Right, that and that's have. something that so, we would want to avoid. We want people to come back. Yeah, and well, even during the closest time we were closed, we had, there were five of us, we would, I'd split the list of our members up into five, and we were calling people right. every week mm -hmm. to see how they were doing. 
And with the older generation, you have lengthy phone conversations. Oh, yes. <laughs> and with some of the younger individuals, it's like, I'm doing okay. Why Why are you calling? Why are you calling? <laughs> yeah. We had the same issue. <laughs> why did you not text? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, why did you not text? <laughs> <laughs> and so we were looking for different ways to connect with people if mm -hmm. they were not physically in the building with us. Well, it certainly seems, too, that a bit of our culture has changed with COVID-19, particularly surrounding the mask. Some people are feeling that, you know, I, hey, I have these constitutional rights and I'm not going to wear one, even though the, the virus is not, is not familiar with the Constitution. It just moves in <laughs> and does its thing. But, I mean, that has really split some relationships with people who feel you should wear it. You know, even if you don't believe in the virus, you should wear it on account of me because you may be carrying it and, and you don't even know it and pass it on to me. And then others who feel well, it's all a big hoax in the first place. Right. So take your mask off. So are you seeing any of that? Is there division? Is there strife? Absolutely. What's, what's happening? Um, I can see even, even within the relationships that I have personally with people in the church and outside the church, um, and some of those relationships have been strained because we find mm -hmm. ourselves on the opposite spectrums. So, um, you know, so I think that one struggle for us as pastors in the church and any church leader really um, is, is, is creating that unity across those lines of division. And that is a very difficult, you know, task right now, um, depending on the situation. Yeah. 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 We've been in Acts and studying the New Testament church and how mm -hmm. everything played out mm -hmm. with the idea of, you know, the basics of what the church was back then and what we need to be focused on today. And that's the, the mission that God has called us to. And that's sharing the good news. And so a lot of what is going on with the mask or not wearing the mask is distracting us from what our real calling is. And so we, as we've been studying Acts and the New Testament church, trying to remind people, okay, this is what we're called to do. We're not called to debate whether masks are working or not working because there's so many different opinions, so many different studies. But when you go to God's word, mm -hmm. his word, the truth, that's what we're supposed to be sharing. We can agree, and it's something that we talked about. There are things that are essential and there are things that are non-essential. Your essential things. Jesus is our Savior and Lord. Mm -hmm. In that, we have unity. Non-essentials. Pizza is the best food ever. That's something... <laughs> you have liberty, you have freedom mm -hmm. to believe whatever you want to believe, go with whatever you want. But in the essentials, you want unity, you want agreement. The non-essentials... Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Mm -hmm. But in all of that, you're supposed to have charity and love. Well, and that's where, when, when people ask me, um, actually I had a, had a college student, um, because we do not mandate masks at church. And, mm -hmm. and you know, his, some of his family has um, asthma and stuff, and so they're at, you know, considered at risk and stuff. And so he was asking, uh, we actually went golfing. And it was his idea. He's like, we can't go out to eat because that's, you know, well, where one, where are you going to go? And then two, it's close quarters. And he didn't want to do that with his family. And so we went golfing to have a, a discussion. And um, here, here this college student is, is asking, well, why are we not mandating masks at church? And we have this whole conversation. And, and um, so I took him to, you know, 1 Corinthians 8 and 9. I told him about the idle meat. You know, mm -hmm. should Christians eat idle meat? And Paul is having this discussion. And you know, and what it comes down to is what you're exactly saying. For the sake of the gospel, if you go to a Gentile's house, they put idle meat in front of it. You don't ask where it is, you know, where it came from. Mm -hmm. You sit down and you eat it, mm -hmm. and you share the love of Christ with them. Mm -hmm. If you're at a Jew's house and there is no meat, whatever, you don't sit there and you, you don't eat the idle meat so that you can share the gospel with them. Mm -hmm. Masks are the same thing. If God calls you to a group that is not masked, but you Absolutely, like I need to wear a mask. I need to wear a mask. But God called you to this group that of you know First Amendment people, right? Is what we had joked about earlier, and um, and they're anti-mask. But God said, "Go share my word with them." Mm -hmm. But they're not going to listen to you because you have a mask on. You better take that mask off and share the gospel with them. 
Same is true reverse. If you go over to this group that is, you know, have fear uh, of the virus and they want mask and they're not going to listen to you because you're not wearing a mask, you better put a mask on mm -hmm. to share the gospel mm -hmm. with them. Because the mask isn't the point, the gospel is. Mm -hmm. Because we're here and called to witness the love of Jesus Christ, not to say, hey, this or that about mask. It's mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. And I, I think you're right. Like that point is being lost right now. And we're trying to, as, as an American church culture, we're trying to fumble our ways through trying to navigate these waters. And we're forgetting Jesus is the one that calms the storm. He's the one that tells you, you have little faith, calms the storm, and then let's get back to work. And that's what we need to do. It's like, okay. what, 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 what hill are you going to die on? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to die on this hill that you shouldn't wear masks. No, I want to die on this hill. I'm going to stand up for Jesus. That's mm. what I want mm. to do. The real problem is we've made it too much of a political issue. And we've made church too much of a political issue. Uh, and we need to get back to the focus of what church is about. Yeah. We've made church about the First Amendment or the not First Amendment mm -hmm. rather than making church about what it is. And that is loving God, serving Christ and serving one another. And I'm to the I'm of the uh, opinion that the mask wearing is not against Scripture. Jesus himself wore a face covering at some point in the sandstorms in the desert I'm sure of it. So what is wrong with the wearing of the mask? And why has Satan, because this is the key, uh -huh. Satan has taken this issue and has div divided the church world, and we haven't even discussed it. Because we let the world discuss whether it's mask or no mask. And the church hasn't discussed it, and we need to start discussing it. So I appreciate your yeah, question. Yeah. Because it is a spiritual issue, not mm -hmm. a matter of a social issue or a civil issue, because that's the world, and that's how they view it. Yeah. We need to get back to the Scripture and view it through Scripture. And there is, there is references in Scripture about obeying the government and not obeying the government. Very good. You're going good. I didn't want to cut anybody off. We need to take a break. We're going to come right back. <laughs> what we do, let's take it another step, uh, another level higher, because there are people who are fearful not only about the mass, they're feel, fearful that the government may come in and begin to mandate mm -hmm what goes on in our church services because of COVID-19. What are pastors going to do then? We'll get to that and more right after this. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. We're back and I really hated to stop everybody because the conversation was really on a roll. Let me, let me just mention this short story. I was riding by a church one day and I saw this sign and I said, did I see what I thought I saw? I turned around and went back the sign said it's either six feet apart or six feet under. Mm. Think about that. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's how they are about it. I mean, actually, people are taking these stands. Mm -hmm. And how, if you're, not, if you're not going to be rigid and take that stand and say the mask or what else, how are you going to justify that to the congregation? If you do decide you're going to be lax, because you feel that's the way to go and that's a loving way to go and you don't require the mask. How do you justify that in the Bible? So whatever position you're going to take, how are you going to justify it and, and say, this is the way we ought to go? Has anybody, it, it, well, quiet, again, man. as we, we, we were talking about, you know, I, again, I know this is probably an unpopular stance and we've taken the stance that we're going to be, I guess, as you said, rigid yeah. Uh, and what we look at, I don't Some see people. it. I don't see it as rigid. Right. Um, I see it as biblical. I, I feel like that mask or no mask has become a, a, a point of civil obedience or civil disobedience. But as believers, we have a whole other realm. We have to look at the spiritual obedience and spiritual disobedience. 
And scripture is very clear. Daniel gives us two examples of Daniel uh, praying and, of course, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego not bowing down. Mm -hmm. And then Acts gives us uh, an example of when uh, the apostles were told not to speak uh, about Jesus' name. Yes. Well, you know, the governor or the government of Ohio, I can't speak for any other state, that's where I live, um, has not separated the church. In those three incidences in Scripture, the church was separated. The believers were separated from everyone else. You do this or else. And we, in fact, at the beginning, the religious, the houses of worship weren't even included. We were the exemption. Yeah. And so I believe that our governor, our government here in Ohio has been fair as far as across the board. Now, mm -hmm. I believe that there's some things with sports. I believe there's some things that I don't necessarily agree with the governor. However, God has placed the authorities above us. Scripture tells us to honor the authorities that have been placed above us mm -hmm. because they are from God. And so we believe that the wearing of the mask is a spiritual issue, not a civil issue. Mm -hmm. And I'm tired of the church taking it on as a civil issue because it's not. It's not about my First Amendment right. I'm also a citizen of heaven. I'm a citizen of the kingdom of God, and that's the First Amendment right that I'm, I want to focus on. <laughs> and, you know, Matthew 23, 11 and 12 says, The greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles themselves will be exalted. And I feel that I can humble myself to put on a mask to serve others. And I believe as believers that's what we need to be doing. Because here's the perfect example. Too many times we think putting on a mask is too much trouble, too much effort, mm -hmm. too much this, too much that. What if Jesus would have decided that the cross was too much effort? Where would we be today? And so the perfect example was Jesus being the servant, humbling himself, and now he's exalted. And I believe that's where the church needs to stand. We will be exalted as we humble ourselves and be the servant of those around us. And one additional yeah. thing, and you said it a second ago about if I don't have a mask, I could be giving COVID to somebody else uh -huh. and not knowing it. Uh -huh. What if that person that we're giving COVID to hasn't yet known Christ and dies from it? They are going to spend eternity in hell because I chose not to humble myself. Okay, I think let's go fast to Chris. Yeah, I think that's a danger. I 100% agree with you on the, the humbling ourselves in order for the sake of the gospel. 100% agree with you. If, if God is calling me here, I, I'll be 100% honest, public TV, I have not worn a mask anywhere. Mm -hmm. Period. How, how do you justify that when you're talking to your congregation and you don't allow, the, you don't, you don't mandate per, rather? That it's they personal wear. responsibility. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, now I have decided that um, for the sake of the gospel that I would wear a mask. So if I need to go to a hospital or a nursing home, mm -hmm. absolutely will. Mm -hmm. We just can't go right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. there's only one person that can go into right. the Lima hospitals. Right. I'm not taking a visit away from a family. Exactly. So I, that's where I have drawn the line of where I will. Now, part of that is the civil disobedience and, and all those things. Um, but I've had to try and reconcile that not only as a Christian, but as a pastor. Mm -hmm. And so what I've looked at from the very beginning, and we you know, talked about it, like I studied Martin Luther, you know, where he was um, doing the bubonic plague, you know, he wrote, you know, um, a big long paper that was published, um, should Christians flee from um, plague? And what it comes down to is, in a nutshell, in a section that he wrote, he said that it's about going where you're called to go and not going where you're not called to go. Mm -hmm. And so we don't do a whole lot of things outside of um, one where we're allowed to go. And then if we need to go there. So you know, for all this time, I have not stepped into those. But that's been my philosophy way before COVID. If exactly. I got a, a, exactly. even a cold, a sore throat, I don't go visit people in the nursing home because exactly. I might give them something and they might be complicated. I said that on the last show that mm -hmm. I was here on. Um, and it was right before all this sure. COVID stuff. Sure. <laughs> what I have looked at personally is, is Luke 5, when Jesus is... Um, walking through and you ha he has the leper that comes to him mm -hmm. he, against the law it was mm -hmm. for that leper to approach mm -hmm. anybody in coming 
It was against the law for Jesus to actually touch him. And before Jesus said a word, he physically reached out and touched him. Mm -hmm. He didn't worry about the law. He didn't worry about, hey, this could contaminate me mm -hmm. or the rest of the disciples. And you could argue, well, he was Jesus. He is God <laughs> and he's not going to get a disease. The disciples were right there with him. The disciples were not immune for that. Mm -hmm. They did not take the quarantine time mm -hmm. that was required from law. They went on and continued to minister. But the difference is, is Jesus went and his disciples went with him where he was needed. They didn't just go and slum around and infect a bunch of people. And I 100% agree with you is if, if you are walking around knowingly sick, whether it's be with COVID or not, and, and, and you are making other people sick, you are wrong. Mm -hmm. You are wrong. Mm -hmm. But to sit there and say that I might with, with a virus, and we can go into the scientific, which we don't need to, but you know, then you have to begin to apply that to everything else, even outside of COVID world. Oh, I agree, 100%. And that's why I was living Matthew 23 before COVID. Yes, but if you start applying that to the mask, then what, how do you ever get rid of that mask? Do you? Because, well, should we? I might. The rest of the world wears them. I might wear it. <laughs> not, the rest of the world doesn't. A lot of Europe does not. Well, but you know, the Middle East and, and, and other areas do. A lot of the rest of the world have already embraced masks long before COVID. But for practical and, reasons, and, not necessarily for disease. We're, hold, we're, we're holding them guys up. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but, but no, I agree with you. No, I yeah. agree with you. And, and, and Jesus did that. But think about the law you're talking about. It wasn't, it wasn't man's law. It was God's law. It was the Old Testament law. Yes, and he disobeyed the Old Testament God. law. Yes. But that wasn't man's law. And we're talking about mass being of man's law yes. rather than being of spiritual. Yeah. But I think we, we, we've got to make sure we're checking our hearts about everything. And are we totally sold out to God? We've got two minutes and I, left and I want to ask <laughs> something else. Sorry, guys. <laughs> no, no. What, 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 what if it gets to the point where government, be it state government, federal government, gets to the point where they say, you know, things are too dangerous. You can't sing in church anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, because of the spewing of um, we'll fluids out and the like. Yeah? You can't sing. You can't preach because of the projection mm -hmm. of, uh, from your mouth, of course, is going to be. Uh, well, in California, ca the they they're trying mayors to do that and now. governors mm -hmm. have already started shutting off the electricity and the water supply to churches, mm -hmm. which is completely illegal in my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you can't. And be, that goes against God's word. Yeah, you, you can't be doing that. But you and they have already to are. remember that the church is not the building, it's the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And for me, you know, God instituted, established three institutions the family, the church, the state. And each has their own uh, boundaries within the operate. Mm -hmm, and once mm -hmm. one enters into another, then you have a choice you need to make. Are you going to stand up for God or are you going to bow down to? Mm -hmm. And um, well, we know one day, you know, um, when the Antichrist comes, he will be a government official yep. and he will mm -hmm. mandate the mark of the beast. So it it yeah. won't be from, I, I personally do not believe that it will be from legislation. He's not going to go to Congress and no. have them pass a law. It'll be the one world leader that some mandate. So eventually as Christians, we are going to have to step up against government to honor God's word right. okay. at any step. Right. Right. To honor God's word. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Gonna, Absolutely. But we're going to have to leave it there. We're just out of time. All right. Tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> Your great panel, you're coming back with us next week for part two of all of this discussion. So we will say to our audience, be sure you stay tuned for next week for part two. Okay, <laughs> Bye-bye for now. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 
100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.